Fast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, traders. All right, well, welcome to the Bookmap Platform Details webinar. This is Bruce at Bookmap. Uh, risk disclaimer, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. So the goal in the webinar here uh, is to, uh, to go over some of the basics, uh, define what Bookmap is, uh, show how you can connect Bookmap uh, to the markets, uh, and uh, how you can subscribe to Bookmap, uh, the different versions of Bookmap, and then uh, we'll jump into the interface uh, of Bookmap and look at the live markets and start to understand some of the um, uh, basic elements on the Bookmap chart. Uh, from there, we'll as we start to define them, we'll also start to look at some of the basics in the order flow and how Bookmap is um, uh, displaying that information. Uh, because that's where you're going to get the advantage uh, is is the the visualization of Bookmap uh, compared to other platforms. It uh, has something very unique, uh, and um, and that will give you an edge uh, in your trading. So uh, now Bookmap comes along with education. Okay, so uh, there is a four-part educational course uh, that comes with the uh, with the with the subscription. Okay, uh, and um, uh, in that course, uh, we start with the basics uh, in order flow uh, and work on up into much more advanced concepts okay, along the way. Uh, so, um, uh, so you can understand uh, order flow uh, and what book map is visualizing with the education. Now, we back up the education process every day in the live markets, okay, so uh, with the advanced order flow webinars. Okay, and they start at 11 a.m. Eastern time every day. Okay, so we'll uh, jump right into the order flow and start to go through some of the advanced concepts of what Bookmap is showing you, uh, and um, and 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 start to uh, analyze the current market, uh, and then based on the education uh, and our analysis, uh, we start to anticipate future price movement. Okay, so uh, you can really start to understand how to how to use Bookmap in the live market. Okay, so let's jump over to the website and scroll down a bit. There's an intro video here, okay, a bit further down, just information about Bookmap in general. Uh, Bookmap for equities, I'll go over this in just a minute. Uh, and a bit further down, okay, connectivity, and we'll stop here. Okay, so um, with them, um, oh, thanks, Andre. Yeah, I had a good good long weekend. It was nice, uh, some uh, nicer weather, uh, and it uh, looks like uh, uh, the summer has, uh, has begun. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's about time. It's been a long winter. Um, anyway, the um, uh, what what is Bookmap? All right, let's define it. So uh, we are a a trading platform. Okay, uh, we just visualize the market in a very unique way. Okay, and we're not a we're not a data provider, nor are we a broker. Okay, so you will need to provide the data for futures and for U.S. equities. Now, we also connect to digital currencies, so uh, Bitcoin, for example, uh, and that's through the GDAX exchange, uh, and that data is actually free. Okay, and I'll, you'll, I'll go over the details in a minute on, on the subscriptions. Uh, but uh, to connect to Bookmap uh, for the futures and U.S. equities, these are the different uh, uh, data providers that uh, you can use to connect. Okay, now you can see there's a few platforms listed here as well, just, just like we are. We're, we're a platform. Uh, and you can see Ninja, TTX Trader Pro, and Interactive Brokers Traders Workstation. Okay, so you can connect via the API of these three different platforms if you want to go that route. Uh, if not, and, and we uh, recommend not, uh, I just connect directly to uh, CQG, Rhythmic, Gain, IQ Feed, Transact, or Dev Experts. Now, the Dev Experts is for NASDAQ Total View and for EdgeX. So let's scroll back up, and that's for all U.S. equities. Okay. You can read about it here. It's a great data feed. Uh, uh, and here's uh, the different um, uh, options that are available. NASDAQ Total View. Okay, you can subscribe to that. You can also subscribe to uh, EdgeX which is BATS, uh, or you can Skype to both of them together, okay? EdgeX and BATS. And uh, that's actually a, a deal right now for $59 uh, for the first month uh, and then $119 uh, each month following that. 
Anyway, uh, let's continue on. So uh, we've defined what bookmap is. Uh, you know how to connect uh, to the various markets. Uh, and uh, let's go down to the different packages that are available. Okay, uh, you can subscribe yearly and get a 20% discount, or you can click here and go to monthly. And you can see digital versions and global versions. So let's describe uh, the differences here. Uh, digital version, you can see this is free. Uh, it connects to only one digital currency uh, at a time uh, through the GDAX exchange. Uh, and it's very limited, uh, limited support and limited um, uh, education. Okay. Now, the digital plus version, uh, what you get with this uh, is uh, the, the data is free for uh, uh, the GDAX. Uh, and uh, you can record and replay. And you can also trade right from the bookmap chart into your GDAX account. All right. Now, you can also uh, access up to 20 different digital currencies at a time. And you also get access to the advanced education uh, and full support. The global version. Now, the global version uh, moves beyond uh, digital currencies. Uh, yes, it includes it as well. Uh, you still get uh, everything in Digital Plus. But you also have the ability to connect to the futures market and the U.S. equities market. Uh, and you will need to use those data providers that I just went over. Okay, We don't provide the data. All right, and you get the advanced education and full support. Now, the Global Plus version, uh, the difference between Global and Global Plus, uh, Global Plus includes everything. Uh, it also includes uh, our uh, proprietary add-on indicators that we put together. Okay. So, for example, uh, the um, uh, there's the ability to trade right from the bookmap chart into your futures or equities account, okay, which is a great feature because you have the liquidity heat map in front of you. You can front run high liquidity or hide your stops behind high liquidity. There's the large lot tracker. Okay, We're looking at uh, specifically larger players in the book holding the majority of liquidity. Uh, imbalance indicators, uh, iceberg uh, tracker here. So again, looking at larger players using iceberg orders uh, and our algo can start to identify them. Uh, and correlation tracker to correlate uh, other markets right on the bookmap chart. Okay, so that's bookmap.com. Uh, some other references here, you can follow us on Twitter at bookmap underscore pro. Uh, all sorts of information. You can see there's a new uh, interview here with uh, Jason Ramos, if you want to read about that. Uh, and uh, all sorts of other stuff here. Um, all right, so the uh, YouTube page as well, you can subscribe uh, at bookmap uh, on YouTube. And uh, some intro videos here on the front page features and components, uh, if you want to understand what uh, some of those are. Uh, and then these order flow video snippets, I would recommend uh, watching as many of these as you can to understand what book map is visualizing and how you can benefit from it. Okay, these are very short, concise videos, and we go over this kind of information uh, in detail in the advanced order flow webinars. All right, well, that's pretty much it. Uh, let's take a look at book map here. We're going to look at the uh, NASDAQ. Uh, and uh, oops, let me close this up. All right. And what are we looking at? Okay. So um, uh, for those of you unfamiliar with Bookmap, well, this might look very foreign to you. Okay? Lots of different things going on here. It's actually really straightforward, and uh, I'm going to um, uh, close up. We, we, you know, we have a, a indicator sub panel here. I'm just going to close that. Uh, we can go over that another time. Uh, and we also have some other indicators on the chart here as well, like a historical view app, which is a great, great indicator. You can see how it's bouncing off of that here in the NASDAQ. Uh, and this blue line, which is a point of control. Now we're going to close up that as well. And point of control. Uh, and then uh, just look at the basic chart here. Okay. So what are we looking at now? Uh, well, it uh, uh, looks like it might be uh, pretty complex. It's it's really not. It's really straightforward. Uh, there's only three elements on this book map chart, and none of them uh, are deriv derivatives of time, price, or volume. You're actually getting a very objective view of the market. Okay. So what are we looking at? We're looking at historical best bid and offer. Okay. There's no aggregation here in a, in a timed uh, chart or bar rotation or anything. There's no bars. It's just historical best bid and offer. 
And then you can see all these dots. Well, these are transactions that took place on that historical best bid and offer. Okay, and then uh, the last element is the heat map, that third element. And all it th that is, uh, is the um, uh, liquidity uh, from the dome. Okay, it's taking the, the, the data from your depth of market, your dome, uh, and then uh, all we do is record it in a heat map, and then we project it on the chart historically. Okay, so you can see where people are bidding and offering. And you can see like uh, if they get filled or not, or if they pull. Okay, this is the the real benefit here in Bookmap. So let's uh, actually uh, kind of use a backwards way here of um, describing some of this, and we're going to take off all of these elements, and we're going to look at a candlestick chart. Okay, and this is a five-minute candlestick chart. Now, um, what's going on here in a in this five-minute uh, candle, for example? Uh, is um, uh, an aggregated period. There's only four data points here, okay? Open, high, low, and close. And that's a problem here because it's it's very opaque uh, what's happened inside there. We have no clue, okay? Just uh, for volume alone, let's uh, cover that. Well, where did the volume take place within any of these candles? We have no idea. Okay? That's an important aspect to know. Okay. Now you might you might have a footprint chart and you can understand exactly where uh, volume is trading on your on your candlestick. However, there's still there's still some issues. Uh, number one uh, is you're not going to be able to access microstructure. Okay, it's with an aggregated period here. Okay, we want to understand these little structural areas that uh, occur, and how do we do that? Well, we we can uh, very simply do that by showing historical best bid and offer. Okay. And there it is. All right. So now we're now we have an understanding of microstructural areas. Okay. So what I what did I mean by uh, microstructure like within this period this time period here? Well, here here is a microstructural area down here. Okay. In fact, it's uh, not so micro. It uh, it kind of fits into a bigger picture here. Okay. So let me explain. Okay. Well, you can see that uh, price uh, came down. Uh, bounced off of this area a little bit, found found a few buyers. This candlestick shows a, a bit of that, uh, but then we trade through. Okay. Well, we broke down below this structural area, okay. and we accepted down here for a little bit, but then uh, we found some buyers actually, and we broke back up into this bigger range here. Okay. So um, uh, understanding these little structural areas down here, though, are essential to understanding the moves that can take place uh, afterwards. Okay. And this is how we can anticipate price movements uh, by understanding these structural areas, the volume that traded there, who's in control, and then also by the uh, uh, the auction, uh, where are they bidding and offering, and how they're behaving in that auction. All right. So let's uh, add some of the elements on here, and let's just show the uh, the volume. Okay. So uh, pretty typical. Uh, you can see here uh, the volume. Uh, for example, uh, uh, look at this nice little move to the upside here. Okay, well, that's uh, you can see the green dots pulling that market, lifting the offer higher. Uh, that's uh, the aggressor uh, on the buy side. They they're hitting the market buy button and they're lifting the offer. Okay. Actually, pretty typical in a micro uh, trend here, as you can see, more volume, aggressive buy volume, trading at higher highs pulling that market upwards. Look at these little uh, pullbacks here. Okay, this is very typical in a trend uh, in the order flow. And this um, is true not only in microstructural areas, but on macro views as well. Okay, you'll see it again and again and again. It's just how the market works. Okay, so what do we see here? Well, there's very little activity here. There's very little selling, in fact, in these little higher highs here. Uh, and the, the buyers are, are clearly in control in this micro trend uh, to the upside. Okay, uh, and uh, this is where it actually broke from uh, in the micro structure was down here. Okay, and you and you can see even a like a, a smaller micro structure. There's structure within structure here. The markets are fractal. Okay? Actually, you can see the buyers start to step in here, and they broke this little structure here with their buying, and then they broke the bigger one up here. And that swing, and look at the volume, and look where it accepted. Okay, in fact, we can draw a nice line across here, okay? and you can see that it accepted above that line. 
that buyers are in control. All right. And we're just looking at the volume here. So let's zoom in and let's define these two elements now that I've added onto this chart. Okay, and there's only two elements here. One is the historical best offer and best bid. And the other are these volume dots, okay? The volume that traded on that historical best bid and offer. Okay, now if you want the uh, precise number, we can hover over this uh, dot here and it gives us the, the date, very precise time. Okay, what was on the ask here? There was four contracts at this uh, time, uh, at this price level. And then the volume here was, this was for volume of one. Okay, so someone hit the market buy button for a volume of one. Okay, that's it. It's as simple as that. Uh, and, um, but the insight here that you can get is, uh, is, is pretty incredible. You can see how they lifted the offer here, swept the book higher, understanding just these small little things make a massive difference in understanding order flow. Uh, and in fact, let's uh, zoom in here because we'll probably see more transactions here, uh, within each one here. And, and indeed we, we do. Okay, so actually it, you can see when I zoomed in here, we see that there's actually three transactions for each for a volume of one. Okay, so let's zoom back out though and notice uh, how, well, we're down here at, at macro, I mean, sorry, at microsecond levels. Okay, so we're looking at millions of seconds, right? Uh, we can even look at billions of seconds. So we can continue to zoom in here uh, and get down into uh, nanosecond level like this. Okay. We're showing every single market event that took place and plotting it on Bookmap. Okay. So that's what you're getting uh, with Bookmap: a very, very precise data uh, and every single market event. And now, as I zoom back out, look what we do, though, just visually, graphically, uh, we have um, uh, uh, aggregated this into a bigger dot, and it shows volume of three. Okay. But as I hover over this one, this one's for a volume of two. Okay. There might be two transactions, and there are uh, when I zoom in. Okay. So anyway, now as I zoom back out, notice how bigger dots, okay, and let's actually bring up the size a little bit. You'll note bigger dots, uh, there's just more volume. Okay. Like this one down here, this one's for volume of 12. Now this one actually is kind of interesting because it shows that the, there's both buying and selling within that area. Okay. It's a pie chart. Okay. So what happened there was a flurry of activity very quickly uh, and both buying and selling took place. So let's zoom in here though. And I'll show you though that we don't aggregate the data. Okay. Uh, you can see exactly what occurred here. Okay. All at the same price level. You can see that the, the best bid and offer changed, uh, and uh, yet uh, buying and selling all took place here at the same price level. Okay, as I zoom back out though, it gives us a, a, a neat uh, pie display that shows the overall here, about three quarters of that uh, uh, volume is uh, aggressive buying. Okay, so that's, that's how we're displaying the volume and the benefits here uh, in the way that we display the volume. Okay. Number one is you can see microstructural moves. Okay, you're not going to get that on your footprint chart. Your footprint chart is going to be aggregated within a bar time frame, okay, or a bar rotation. It doesn't matter. It's still going to be aggregated within a bar. Okay, so you want to understand though these areas here in microstructure because they lead to bigger moves. And when you can start to understand that the buyers are in control here. And they come back and we test here again. We found more buyers lift the offer and we break up above here looking for the next swing up here okay, to be tested. Now, this is just that second element uh, on the chart and understanding the volume uh, is important okay, and the speeds of these moves as well. Okay, you're not going to see that in your footprint chart either. Okay, now, uh, the, the, um, uh, now, this is great. It's great to see the volume. Okay, very precisely uh, displayed uh, exactly when and where it traded and by whom and by and how much. Very precisely. Okay, so uh, but uh, that's really only one side of what's going on here. Okay, there's so much more, uh, and and this is where Bookmap is interesting because uh, we're gonna sh we're gonna uh, uh, turn on the heat map. Okay. And there's this whole other side that happened outside of the transactions here that we want access to. Okay. And that's through that uh, uh, historical uh, 
uh, dome, okay, the heat map. Okay, now we're getting insight here. We turn that on. Let's turn off our candlestick chart. Okay, all right. Now, how does this help us? Okay, well, uh, you can see here, for example, uh, they're starting to absorb. Uh, looks like on the buy side here, with very high liquidity here, this orange, yellow, orange and yellow lines. Uh, again, orange and kind of red down here. They're starting to looks like uh, absorb in some of these areas. So we're starting to see, you know, on the bid here, there's some interest in buying. Okay. Well, that led to, uh, uh, you know, maybe exhausting out some of the buyers and find, finding or sellers. I'm sorry, uh, and uh, starting to find some buyers. Okay. And they'll they'll come back in and lift the offer up into some of the higher highs here. Okay. So anyway, uh, let's um, understand how this is all derived here, and that, because that's important. It's all derived from the dome, okay? Your depth of market, okay? and all the insights that we're going to get here. Well, we're going to go through that in detail in the uh, advanced order flow webinar. But I can go over some of some of the uh, uh, more s simpler or straightforward uh, order flow phenomena. Okay, but let's uh, let's define what the heat map is because this is where people get kind of um, uh, a bit uh, confused, okay? It's really simple, it's really straightforward. Uh, most of us are accustomed to the dome, okay? Your depth of market. And so uh, uh, this is what it looks like in bookmap here. Okay? Everything to the right of this vertical white line here is the current market. Okay, now you can see the heat maps changing here. Okay? Let's zoom in a little bit more, okay? Now you can see the uh, this is your best bid and offer here. Here's your price ladder for the NASDAQ. This is current price. Okay, this number is the last traded volume here. Uh, and then uh, we're looking at the uh, depth of market here. This is your dome, COB column, current order book. It's showing your depth of market uh, on the offer. These are traders or contracts uh, waiting to uh, transact, uh, providing liquidity at these uh, price levels. Okay, they want to be sellers up here. Down here, they want to be buyers, and they're providing liquidity. This is the auction. Okay, this is uh, the current auction and what's going on. Now, note some of these these changes that are just taking place now. So, when these numeric values change, the contracts they're they're either added or pulled. Okay, it's reflected here in this window. Okay, with the heat map. Okay, we'll see a change, and it's it's changed in the heat map. Now, where it gets really interesting is we take that data, and then it's uh, recorded and transpose on the chart historically. Okay. So how does that help us? Well, let's zoom out. Okay. Now we can start to use the dome, not just for the current market, but we can start to use it on much higher time frames and start to understand the relationship of sellers up here with price and the aggressors, the buyers. Okay. And then the buyers on the bid down in some of these areas. And how are they behaving? Okay. So now we're starting to get a really big uh, uh, picture and understanding of not only the current market, okay, but the historical market. Okay. So, for example, why is price starting to reverse right now? Well, look at them. They, they traded up into these um, uh, pretty high contracts up here. Okay. Looking at uh, this uh, 69, 66 area here. Okay. Well, uh, the, uh, the buyers uh, ran into... A lot of sellers willing to looks like stay in the book here. And let's zoom in here and let's just make sure. Okay. Yeah, a little little bit of pulling here, uh, but um, uh, 49 contracts are here. Okay, as you can see. Uh, and then uh, what traded here is actually about uh, 37 of those. They started to pull some of it, but some of it traded. Okay. And then very high contracts here, 85 uh, here, as you can see in the in the dome. Uh, at the 69, uh, 66 price level, okay? And as I scroll forward, okay, well, did that area trade? And here's our answer, yes, okay? This is real liquidity. These 86 contracts, uh, they traded, okay? We see 20 that traded here so far, okay? And as we start to zoom back out, well, in the, in the end here, it looks like 84 of those traded, okay? So it was 86 out of those 86, 84 traded. And that's fact, okay? Now we understand and know that larger players were here, 
right? And they stayed in the book. This was real liquidity. They had the intent to trade. They are now sellers, okay? And uh, we, we came up actually one more price level here, okay? And traded into this higher liquidity up here, about uh, 50 contracts. And it looks like about 40 of those traded here. Some of it was pulled, no doubt, no doubt about it. But you can see some of it traded too, okay? All right, so now we've seen larger players starting to absorb a lot of the price uh, uh, activity on the buy side. The buyers hit into this liquidity. They lifted the offer up into this area here and traded, and the transactions took place. Okay? They absorbed once, twice, thrice. Okay? Now, they didn't absorb in, in, you know, in total all of it. Uh, uh, on the way up, uh, it, it does look like they did up here uh, because uh, uh, there was no more, I mean, price reversed at this point. Okay. And there was no more buyers. Okay. The buyer, the buyers are exhausted out here. Look at, look at the, the, uh, the best offer actually went one tick higher and not one contract traded up here. Okay. So now we know larger players are, uh, are positioned on the sell side here. Okay. We get one more test up above and, uh, and find some buyers okay. uh, lift the offer a bit higher. And actually that looks like some more absorption here took place as well, or at least, uh, uh, transactions were met uh, between the uh, uh, high liquidity here. Uh, it was about uh, 36 contracts at this point. Uh, and um, uh, it looks like about 51 traded. Okay. All right. And uh, anyway, uh, we, we, uh, we found the buyers and the sellers and transactions took place. Uh, but uh, we didn't really find any, any more follow through on buyers. Well, why is that? Well, I mean, they just, they, there weren't more buyers. Uh, if there were, they would have lifted the offer higher up into this area up here where there's even higher liquidity, right? Instead, we didn't find the buyers. We, we start to rotate back down. And uh, well, what happens in some of these areas? Well, we start to find some sellers, okay? And look at the little microstructural areas here that are, are broken. Okay, here's the, the sweep of the book to the high side. Okay, swept the book. They took all the liquidity from some of these price levels. Uh, and then uh, actually they didn't support it again here. No more buyers. Sellers came in and sellers really came in down here. All right. And so they're, they're pulling that market down. Okay. So as you can see how important it is to understand the reaction or relationship between those that are providing high liquidity uh, and, um, uh, the uh, the aggressors, uh, how much buying or selling pressure there is uh, in the marketplace. Okay? When you start to piece some of these things together, you can start to anticipate the price movement based on what you see. Okay? And that's what we do in the advanced webinars. So uh, anyway, it's uh, time to go. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions. And if you're uh, signed up for the uh, advanced webinar, we'll see you over there. Okay, thanks.